So now I'm going to present. And then will you guys just give me like a little thumbs up when you see my screen come up? Okay. All right. And then um, feel free to like unmute and stop me if you got a question in the middle, okay? All right, so um, coterminal angles, all that means is that these two angles are gonna end up in the same exact spot. So they're gonna um, end in the same place regardless of which direction you go. So 45 degrees, if I go counterclockwise with this blue arrow, that from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise, that would land me here at 45 degrees. But I could go the other way around the circle and still land there. So do you see how even if I start on the positive x-axis but I go clockwise, I could land at the same spot. But I would call it a different angle. So because I'm going clockwise, it's gonna be a negative angle. And then we have to figure out what degrees that would be. So just use your knowledge of a circle. How many degrees are there one time around a circle? Yep. So if, if you already have 45 of those degrees, we can subtract 45 from 360. And then we're gonna get 315 degrees. So that's this big red angle, but it's gonna be a negative 315 degrees because I'm going clockwise. So these two angles, 45 and negative 315, those are called coterminal angles. They land in the same exact spot. It's just that you're going in different directions to get there, that's all. So they're, they're like equivalent angles. Another coterminal angle I could do is if I like started on the positive x-axis and I went counterclockwise all the way around the circle and then a little bit more to land me there again. So do you see how I went all the way around the circle? That'd be 360 degrees plus that 45 little chunk. So that would be doing 360 plus 45 and when we add those up, we'll get 405. So, how does that work if the circle can get bigger? Um, the circle's not getting bigger. It's not like the radius is changing or anything like that. It's more about. No, I know. I'm, saying how does it, I'm saying, how does it work if the circle isn't getting bigger? Because if you go from like initial point where you started in the circle, isn't that just going to be, um, I think you might have cut out. I didn't hear all of what you said. I heard if you go around, then that that's all I heard you say. So if you start at that point and then you go around, and then you end at the same exact point, isn't that just gonna be 360 since you just did a full circle? Um, the full circle, um, maybe let me get a bigger pen. So if I start here and I go around and I end here, that's a full circle. And then I'm gonna go a little bit more. And I don't have to um, do the spiral kind of effect. Like I, um, let me back up. I just did that so you could see, mm, maybe I'll do a different color. I just did it so that you could see that I was overlapping. So if here's 45 degrees, I could start like here and go all the way around. So there's 360 degrees. And then I'm going a little bit more past that, 45 more degrees. So there's the 360 
and then I'm going 45 more to get here. Does that, can you see that? Does that help at all? Yeah. So the idea is, sorry. Oh, gotcha. And we can keep going forever and ever. So like I could start here and I could go one time around and then I could go a second time around and I could go a third time around and then that extra little bit to land here again. So I can just keep winding around the circle over and over and over and over. And what I would be doing is just adding 360 degrees as many times as I wanted. So I could do, I could do 45 plus 360 plus another 360. That would mean I'm gonna go around the circle twice. And that would give me another coterminal angle. So if I do 45 plus 360 plus 360, I'll get 765. That would be another coterminal angle. All of these angles are equivalent. They all land in the same spot right here. So here's what I would write so, down. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so then what, what would it be like, like for the, um, like for the, you know, for like the two angles, like they don't share the, like they both like meet like at the same point. What if they don't? Yeah, yeah. Then like, like what, like what is like that called? Oh, ah. Uh, that wouldn't have, that doesn't have a name. Um, okay. So coterminal angles mean that they definitely hit at the same spot. So they have the same initial side and they have the same terminal side. The initial side is this X axis. And then the terminal side is wherever you end up. So like think of like a terminal at an airport. That's where you, your plane ends up at the end. So um, I can get from this initial to this terminal going that direction, or I can get from this initial to the terminal going that direction. So if it's co-terminal, do you just like add, add it? So if it was like five, would the co-terminal be like 10 degrees? So if you, if you started with five degrees, you can add 360 to it. That means you're going to go around one more time. So the coterminal angle would be 365. Oops, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Um, no, I did that right. <laughs> oh, I haven't had enough coffee today. Okay, let me just draw it. So like, let's say this is five degrees right here. So I can get five degrees going this way, right? Or yeah. I could start on that positive x-axis, go one time around, which would be 360, and then add on that five more degrees. So that would be 360 plus five. Yeah, so that would be 365. So how do you know when to add or when negative? You can do either one. It's totally your choice, just depending on which way you want to go around. So with this same example, instead of going um, counterclockwise, I could go clockwise and end up right here. And that, do you see how that orange is all the, all the circle except five degrees? So that would be 360 minus five degrees. Um, and when you do that, 360 minus five, you get 355. But since we were going clockwise, we would call that negative 355 degrees. Another way to do that, to make that just easier, so you don't even have to remember to add on that negative sign, is if instead of going 360 minus five, if you do five minus 360, then automatically you're gonna get that negative 355. So here's what I would say in this part down here where we've got a fill in the blank for like a general rule. To find a coterminal angle, and I would write this down like somewhere in a, in a notebook or something, to find a coterminal angle, 
If you're talking in degrees, just add or subtract 360 degrees as many times as you want. So let me get like another clean page and we'll do a couple more examples of that and then we'll come back to talk about radians. And I have it written down again um, at the top of this page right here. So if you want to find a coterminal angle, just add or subtract 360 deg degrees as many times as you want. So let's say I start with a negative 100 degree angle. If I'm told to find a coterminal angle, I can add 360 degrees or I can subtract 360 degrees. And both of those will be coternal angles. They'll end up in the same spot. So if I add 360 degrees, I'll get 260. If I take negative 100 and I subtract negative, or if I subtract 360 degrees, then I'll get negative, oops, negative 460. I could, I could add 360 as many times as I want. So like, okay, this would be a coterminal angle. This would be a coterminal angle. I could do negative 100 and I could add 360 twice if I want to. That's just me going around the circle two times instead of going around the circle once. So if I do negative 100 plus 360 plus 360, I'm going to get 620 degrees. That would also be a coterminal angle. So, so, go ahead. On the test, are we going to have, if there's like more than one answer? I don't know. This is just confusing to me. So, you're right. There's more than one answer. But what I did on the homework today is I made it multiple choice. So, only one of the answers is going to be correct. So, will it be like that on the test? Probably, like, yeah. Just... Yeah, just to make it easier to, so like, if I do multiple choice, I can set my Google form to give you immediate feedback. Like when you submit it, you'll see which ones you got right, right away. Um, and that's easier to do if I make it multiple choice. If I made it free response, yeah, everybody could answer a different answer. Because there would be an infinite number of possible answers that are coterminal. I could keep adding 360 or subtracting 360 as many times as I wanted to, so everyone in the whole class could come up with a different answer, and they would all be right. So just to eliminate that, I'm making a multiple choice. So the homework are going to be times where we have to add or subtract more than, like, more, like 360 more than once? I don't think on this homework there is. Okay. Yeah. So, for example... If I'm doing negative 100 degrees, this is 90, like if I start here at zero, down here would be negative 90 degrees if I'm going this direction. So then negative 100 degrees must be like right about here. And then if I went the positive way around, if I went this way, that blue angle, that would be 260. Because if you think about it, if I'm going this way, I would only need 100 more degrees to get to 360. And we know a full circle is 360. You want, do, you, do you want to draw, you want to draw that line first before you find the other two angles around the circle? If you were going to draw a picture, yeah. Drawing, drawing this line where the first angle given is, so the negative 100 is right here. That might help you visually to try to figure out another angle going a different direction, but you don't have to draw a picture. So if, if the picture is not helping, then I would just stick to just add 360 or subtract 360. That's all you gotta do. So like, here's...
Go ahead. You want both speakers? Nope, you can choose whether you want to. But if I have it a multiple choice question, the answer that's correct, you know, might be the one where you subtract 360. And maybe you okay. thought to add 360, you know, so um, it might not hurt to start with your given angle, like 150 degrees, add 360, or subtract 360. And then do you want us to Start with the number that is given. Or do yeah. You want to start with 360? I would start with the number that's given, and then just add 360 to it or subtract 360 from it. I think that'll just be an easy kind of way to just stay consistent. So if I take this given angle right here of 150 and I add 360 to it, I get 510. Mm -hmm. Or if I subtract 360 from 150, I'll get negative 210. Both of those would be coterminal angles. So these two would end up in the same place that 150 degrees would end up. Okay. So I would write this down if you haven't yet, this stuff right here. If you want to find a coterminal angle, just add or subtract 360 degrees. And you can do, you technically can do it as many times as you want. So you could keep adding 360 over and over and over. That's just going around and around and around. Or you could subtract 360 over and over and over. And then you'd be going the other direction around and around and around. But if you just want to stick yeah, to... Go ahead. Which, which, that to find any, any angle that's um, coterminal? Yep. Okay. Yep. So just start with the given angle that I give you. Add 360 or subtract 360. And that'll give you one of the answers, and it'll be multiple choice, so you'll see one of those on there as an option. So then the issue becomes, what if I give you an angle in radians? See, that's a little bit trickier because you're not as familiar with radians, um, and it's fractions, and it's involving pi, and all that kind of stuff. So just like we were adding or subtracting 360, if we're in radians, we're going to be adding or subtracting 2 pi because 2 pi is 360 degrees. They are the same thing. This one is in degrees and 2 pi would be in radians. So kind of think of it like, like languages, like Maybe when we're talking in degrees, that's like English, and then 2 pi is like French or something. So we just have to, instead of adding or subtracting 360, we're going to add or subtract 2 pi. So it'll be the same concept. So like if this is your given angle, if 3 pi over 4 is your given angle in radians, I can add 2 pi to that, and I'll get a coterminal angle. The only thing to be careful about is that right now that has a denominator of one and they're not common denominators. So you can't add them yet. You have to get a common denominator. So I would have to multiply this fraction by four on top and bottom to get that common denominator. So really what I'm talking about is three pi over four plus eight pi over four when I multiply by four on top and bottom. And then now that you have your common denominator, you can add them up. So I'm gonna get 11 pi over four, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be your coterminal angle. So the original angle, three pi over four and 11 pi over four are the exact same angle. Three, just, I know that you're not quite as familiar, but three pi over four is located right here. So three pi over four is when I'm going counterclockwise like that. 11 pi over four would be if I went around the circle once and then I went that much farther. 
So that's what 11 pi over 4 is. And I could find the other coterminal angle if I subtract 2 pi. So if I start with my original and I subtract 2 pi instead of adding 2 pi, I would just go through those same motions of getting that common denominator. So then it would be 3 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4. So 3 minus 8, that'll be a negative 5 pi over 4. So that would be another coterminal angle. And that one would be going clockwise like this, because negative means you're going clockwise. I'll try to color code. So this is the orange angle in the picture, and this is the pink angle in the picture, and the original was the blue. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So how we know, um, is there like a cheater or something that like the circle with like all like the pies around it or like how would you know where, because I, I'm looking at that picture right now and I see two pi and then uh, three, 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 four, four. So how would I know where the pies would go on the circle? Yeah, so we can, do you remember in my last video, I I broke it down yeah. by every 45 degrees? Yeah, um, I can go back over that today if you want. Just draw that picture one more time. Um, I, I totally realize right now you're probably not as familiar with where the radians are located. Here, let me, um, let me do this. Okay, 3 pi over 4 looks foreign, right? What you could do is you can convert to degrees if you're just better with degrees. So do you remember if you want to convert to degrees what you multiply by? Isn't it like pi over 180? Yep. 180 over oh no. Pi. What just happened? My Promethean just shut down for no reason. But yes, I'll talk you through it. So yeah, you would multiply by 180 over pi if you want to convert to degrees. And then the pi's will cancel. So then you would just do 3 times 180 divided by 4. And when you type that in your calculator, you're going to get 135. So, so, go ahead. Does that mean that 135, like on the circle that we drew yesterday, that's where all of them are going to be? So, like, if that makes sense. So, like, you know how we have, like, the, the grid and stuff and then the circle? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that, like, all on that circle are going to, like, match up? I don't, I don't yep. Know yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So I finally got my page back up and running. So you multiplied by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. Shh, Finn. Three times 180 divided by four, you're going to get 135 degrees. So on the, the picture that we did in the last video, 135 degrees was right here. So any coterminal angle is going to land in that exact spot. So straight up 135 degrees goes counterclockwise. I could go this direction and I'm going to still land here. So if I did 135 minus 360, I would get negative 225. That is the same exact angle here. It's just like calling it with another name. Like 
the blue is English, the pink is French or something. They both mean the same thing. It's only difference is the direction that you're going. Negative means you're going clockwise, positive means you're going counterclockwise, but they end up in the same spot. And 135 degrees is always going to be here. So I guess what I was getting back to is when Peter asked, like, how am I supposed to know where um, 3 pi over 4 is? Well, if, if you just convert to degrees, that might help you. Like, if you just feel more comfortable with degrees. But... If the problem is asking for a coterminal angle and they give you the angle in radians, you should answer in radians. So I do want you to get in, used to that. So you don't have to draw a picture. If the picture's throwing you off and you're just not happy with that, you don't have to draw the picture. You just straight up add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi. Like what? What's the number order of the grids? Like which one and which grid is number two, number three? Are you thinking? Um, are you thinking like on a graph like this? Yeah. Oh, we so don't. Like, we don't have those tick marks. We don't have tick marks when we're talking about this because we're talking about an angle that something is rotating at. Like the 90 degree angle, like things, like what numbers are those to indicate what's in the grid land? Hmm. Um, uh, okay, you tell me if I'm answering your question because I'm not quite sure. But like, so you would start at zero, the next. The next one here would be 90. So if you're going every 90 degrees, 90 plus 90 would put you at 180. And then add on 90 more degrees and you get to 270. And then you can, yeah. you can add in different um, intervals. So like I could go like this. So now I'm gonna be going every 45 degrees because 45 degrees is half of 90. So if I add on 45 more degrees to 90, then that puts me at 135. 90 plus 45. And then if I add 45 more, I get to 180. If I add 45 more, I get to 225. Oh, they're called um, quadrants. Yeah. What, what number quadrants? Oh, that's a good segue. I was going to get there in a little bit. Um. So here, these are your quadrants. So when you're in, if you take your graph and you split it up into four parts, quadrant one is right here, quadrant two is here, three is here, and this is four. They're in Roman numerals. That's just how they always number their quadrants. So I wanted to keep consistent with that. So one, two, three, four. So you start and you're going counterclockwise. So if I like, hoping this works, but it's kind of slow. Um, in quadrant one, you have zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and then 90 would be up here. So those are all in quadrant one. And then the ones in quadrant two, oops, I thought that was going to be attached to it. Everything is just slow because I'm chatting with you guys and I'm recording. So it's just like my processor is barely functioning. Um, so then this angle right here would be 120 degrees. This angle would be 135. This would be 150. And here's 180. So... Um, The, these ones right here are going every 45 degrees, but then 
these guys are going every 30 degrees. So do you see how like from this green to this green, 30 plus 30 more is 60, plus 30 more is 90, plus 30 more is 120, plus 30 more is 150, plus 30 more is 180. So all these green ones are going every 30 degrees and the orange ones are going every 45 degrees. <clears throat> and 90 works with both of them because 45 plus 45 makes 90, but then like 60 plus 30 makes 90. And then this would be the third quadrant. Trying to move that. Oh. Technology is fun. I can't even get it in the right spot because it's moving so slow. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, so then if I add 30 more on to 180, I get 210. And then this would be 225 and this would be 240. And down, straight down is 270 degrees. So all of those are in quadrant three. All of these were in quadrant two. Okay, and then in quadrant four, this would be 300, 315, and 330. And then this would technically also be 360. Zero and 360 degrees are the same thing. Um, so, you're gonna have a question on the homework that'll say, okay, what quadrant is 275 degrees in? So 275 would be between 270 and 300. So it's somewhere in here. So that's in quadrant four. And I'm going to give you like multiple choice, you know, like quadrant one, two, three, or four, and you, just, you would click quadrant four. Um, the other thing that I had in my last video, you remember how I had the conversions for radians? So um, if you're drawing this picture right now, or if you already did, 30 is pi over six. 45 is pi over 4, 60 is pi over 3, 90 was pi over 2, 120 is 2 pi over 3, 135 is 3 pi over 4, 150 is 5 pi over 6, 180 is pi, 210 is 7 pi over 6, 225 is 5 pi over 4. 240 is 4 pi over 3. 270 is 3 pi over 2. 300 is 5 pi over 3. 315 is 7 pi over 4. And then 330 is 11 pi over 6. Um, and again, on my last video notes, I went through how to get all those. So I went by sixths or I went by fourths to get all of these. Um, so let's say, let's say I ask you what quadrant is negative five pi over four in. And personally, when I first learned about radians, the negative ones really threw me off. So I could tell myself, well, if I find a coterminal angle with this, I could get it to be a positive angle. If I add 2 pi to it, that will get me a coterminal angle, an angle that'll end up in the exact same spot. 
And this is technically over one. So in order to get a common denominator, I'd have to multiply by four on top and bottom. So I'm really doing negative five pi over four plus, this would be eight pi over four. And when I add those two together, I'm gonna get three pi over four. This is an angle that is on here. Three pi over four is right here. So this negative five pi over four is the exact same thing as three pi over four. And knowing that, I can answer the question. I know that it's in quadrant two. Or I could convert this to degrees if you like degrees better and go that route to figure out what quadrant it's in. Any questions about this stuff so far here? The, the only other example we didn't get to was this one right here, but I kind of just did one like it. So again, if you're given an angle in radians to find a coterminal angle, you can add two pi to it, or you can subtract two pi. But just make sure you get a common denominator. Oh, this actually was the angle we just did. So never mind, we did it already. That was convenient. I forgot I did that. So when you get your common denominator and add them up, that's your coterminal angle. So that's all you're doing in the homework is getting coterminal angles. So if you're in degrees, let um, me go back here. If you're in degrees, just add or subtract 360. If you're in radians, just add or subtract 2 pi. Make sure you get a common denominator. And then the only other thing is figuring out what quadrant you're in. That's, that's all the Google form is going to be today. Um, we went over our time, right? So if you got to go... Um, I think we have two more minutes. Oh, we do? I thought we went, oh, I thought we went until 10. Oh, I think, I have the memorality of you one. Um, is it okay if I go? Yes, yes, please do. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, if you want to stick around and ask more questions, go for it. I morality too. Okay, no problem.